Welcome back to the 76 Capital Sports Leadership Show. My name is Wayne Kimmel, managing partner of 76 Capital, the sports tech venture capital company. On this show, as you know, I interview top sports entrepreneurs, athletes, and executives who are truly shaping and many times changing the overall sports business industry. Today, we're going to talk about the world of sports collectibles with Scott Lowen, the CEO of Candy Digital, the next generation digital collectibles company that brings together world-class digital artists, designers, and technologists to develop a broad range of NFTs. Scott, welcome to the 76 Capital Sports Leadership Show. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Super happy to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you talk about talk about all the things that you're doing. I mean, look, I just I, I kind of mentioned that magic word or those magic three letters NFTs. So um, let's dive right into it and and please share with with our audience here on our Census Capital Leadership um, Series to you know what is the real story behind Candy you know Digital and how how did you build this thing? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll, I'll go uh, way back to uh, the, the end of 2020, which is really uh, when, uh, when Candy came into existence. And a um, uh, couple things happened in the, the back half of 2020. And I like to say it was sort of the time before most people even knew how to spell NFT. What, what NFT wasn't something anyone was talking about unless you were like deep in the crypto space. You, you had no idea what a non-fungible token was. Um, and so, you know, I come at this business and really the thesis around founding it uh, from the crypto world. And so my background is a background in finance. One of my business partners over my career is a guy named Mike Novogratz. Mike Novogratz is the founder of, of Galaxy Digital. Galaxy Digital is uh, kind of the premier merchant bank in the blockchain and crypto space. And so um, my journey in the crypto Web3 space started back in 2016 really through the lens of finance and understanding, you know, was this, a, gonna, was this an asset? Was this a transaction processing uh, tool? What, you know, what's a smart contract? And so sort of learning and, and trying to understand what the impact on the world was gonna be. Fast forward to 2020, um, what we started, what we saw was uh, an increasing amount of adoption into the world of blockchain and cryptocurrencies where people sort of got their heads around, okay, what's a blockchain? How does it work? Why is it important to now start to think more about what were the use cases? And so uh, in 2020, we saw, uh, you know, a lot of finance related uh, developments. We saw new blockchain developments. But we're really talking about how do we, where do we see the next 1 million, 10 million, 100 million people sort of coming into this world of um, what we now call kind of Web3. And um, as we thought about that uh, and we thought about, the, you know, what were the things that connected people to new technology, content was, was where we focused. And so thinking about Scott, content. Well, Scott, I got to interrupt you for one second. We talked, we're talking 2020. So everyone, you know, harkens back to 2020. Was this before the pandemic or right? This is, this is mid pandemic. So we started a company, you know, in the, basically in the throes of global lockdown, um, you know, uh, as everyone was, you know, figuring out, okay, what were they doing? They were, and this is part of the story. They were going into their basement. They were going into their attic. They were dusting off their trading cards. They were reconnecting with nostalgia and, the thesis around starting, can you know, what what is now called Candy, um, was to lean into content and collectibles. And so, you know, we looked at art, we looked at music, we looked at sports. And with sports, you've got billions of global fans. You've got passionate communities around leagues, teams, and athletes. And you have a sports collectibles business that's been around for decades and was really sort of turbocharged by the pandemic. And so. The thesis of Candy was really to use this new technology, blockchain and smart contract, to create a new generation of collectibles that connect people to their passions, right? And so taking the tenets of what does it mean to be a fan? What does it mean to be a collector? And what does it now mean to have verifiable ownership of a digital asset? That's really how Candy was born. Wow. So you're in the middle of all this. You mentioned, you know, some of your one of your um, your co-founder uh, Mike Novogratz, right? Um, and but you also were able to bring in some other people initially 
to kind of really spice things up a little bit, you know, to start the company? Yeah. You know, listen, we, we, um, we, we thought about, you know, how do you start a company in the sports space and who do you want to partner with? You know, number one, two, three on the list is Michael Rubin at Fanatics, right? And so thinking about uh, the Fanatics brand, the Fanatics customer base, and the relationships that Fanatics has uh, with the teams in the leagues, that was really bringing the, those two entities together. Fanatics and Galaxy was the joint venture that, you know, became Candy. And then when we launched the business officially and announced it in June, we brought the kind of third superstar player uh, to the table, and that's Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary, uh, as a, I'm sure everyone knows and loves, uh, has been a major player in the sports collectibles business and was very early in seeing the huge potential of NFTs and Web3. And so our three founding board members, Mike Novogratz, Mike Rubin, and, uh, and Gary Vaynerchuk is kind of how we launched the company in June. Uh, with our first official partner, uh, Major League Baseball. And so, you know, super excited to, to get kicked off with, um, you know, one of the great leagues and frankly, you know, one of the most technologically savvy of the leagues as well. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I have to ask, I mean, you know, many entrepreneurs out there, I mean, you, you would just wouldn't believe that you were able to put together that kind of a dream team at the beginning of your company. Can you share with us how you did that? Um, well, listen, there's always a bunch of luck. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess what I would say is um, I'm, uh, you know, if you, if you think about sort of founders and particularly founders in the Web3 and blockchain space, I probably have a significantly greater amount of gray hair than, uh, you know, than, than a lot of people who are, who are starting businesses in this space. And so prior to founding Candy, I spent 27 years in finance building and running, running global businesses. And so I've been very fortunate over my career to develop fantastic relationships, uh, not only with people in finance, but with you know, senior leaders uh, across, uh, across industries. And you know, thankfully, I brought with me the credibility and the experience of how do you build a business and how do you build a team and how do you do that at scale and how, you know, how can you do that and interface with world-class brands like Major League Baseball or WWE or Netflix? So um, it's always a bit of luck, uh, but experience helps. So what's it like at a board meeting with Mike, Michael, and Gary? It's gotta <laughs> be special. Uh, it's definitely special, uh, certainly entertaining, um, but um, you know, listen, it, it, it's fantastic, right? Because what you have is you have three incredibly intelligent, ambitious, and, and thoughtful individuals who bring very different perspectives to the table, right? Mike Novogratz is very much, you know, one of the leading voices in crypto and blockchain. Um, Gary is uh, legendary, right, within his community as a, as a marketer uh, and as a motivational figure. And, and Michael obviously is, you know, one of the key leaders in the overall sports space and, and uh, sports business space, right? And so, um, you know, each brings something unique to the table, thinking about, uh, you know, not only how do you build a business, but how do you engage partners? How do you work with customers? And at the end of the day, you know, my job as CEO and our team's job is, is to build, you know, one of, if not the leading business in this space in a brand new industry. And so, you know, leveraging those guys as board members, their insights, and then, you know, our own intuition and our own vision for how we build the company, it you know, puts us in a really fortunate spot. Well, you have an amazing relationship also, as you mentioned, when you launched, you, you launched with Major League Baseball. As fortunately, as we both know, many of our companies are official partners of, of Major League Baseball as well uh, at 76 Capital. And just what, what Kenny Gersh and, and, and Casey Brett and the rest of the team there and what they've been able to do to really help our companies. I'm sure they're doing a lot of that with you. Um, and what's that relationship been like? And, and what was it like to kind of kind of go get off, you know, you're, you're going off the getting off the ground and you have, you know, one of the top leagues in, in the world as a partner of yours? Yeah, it was great. And I would say for, for kind of two or three different reasons. One was... Um, despite the fact that, you know, blockchain and Web3 is still in its infancy, um, baseball already had experience. They had already started to experiment a bit in the space. 
um, you know, albeit, you know, early, I would say. And so the, you know, the traction wasn't necessarily what they, um, what, what they had hoped for at the time, but they very much understood the opportunity. And as a league, I think have been one of the leaders from a technology perspective. And so, you know, they were all in Kenny, uh, in particular, um, you know, it has become uh, it, it, as involved in the crypto and Web3 space as anybody uh, in the sports world. Um, Casey, Matt Jabko, other folks on his team have really been fantastic partners, helping us navigate uh, across the league with the various teams. And, you know, when we started out, uh, one of our first projects was a project that was specifically targeted and designed to work with each of the teams to really understand, you know, where were the teams in terms of their understanding and excitement about the space? Um, what were their thoughts about engaging their fans and their players? Um, and, you know, listen, we couldn't have done that without the partnership with baseball and their willingness and excitement about leaning into, you know, this, fu this digital future. Yeah, I mean, can you share with us, you know, some of the some of the stories of of working with some of the clubs, and 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 what are some of the most successful drops in, that you've had so far? Yeah, so um, our first drop, you know, was one that was really important to us. Uh, it was a commemorative uh, digital asset of Lou Gehrig, right? And so, you know, there was a certain poetry in terms of kind of our, our first official baseball product, uh, taking a piece of baseball history and American history with the luckiest man speech, right? And marrying it with this new technology. Um, our second series is what we called our stadium series. And so we worked with an artist, S. Preston, who'd done a series of sort of abstract graphic designs focused on each of the different stadiums. And, and as I said, that was kind of purpose built to engage the clubs. Um, one, to create a digital collectible and offer something that would appeal specifically to the fans of the Yankees or the Mets or the Orioles or, or you know, each of the clubs, um, but also gave each of the teams an opportunity to kind of lean in and put together uh, an experiential component. And so part of our thesis in this space is that, um, well, you know, we're huge believers in a digital future and NFTs. We're also big believers that you need to have a, a, a continuum of digital only, digital physical, and digital experiential to really bring the fans in uh, where they're at. You know, we, we know that crypto wallets, digital wallets are clunky. Not everyone, you know, owns a cryptocurrency or wants to. And so we've kind of built our business and focused our products around the everyday fan. And so creating assets and experiences that connect with people when they're in the ballpark, right? You know, basically extend their love of collecting cards, uh, create gamification and challenges. Um, you know, those have all been important components. And so what we found with the teams, um, as you would expect with 30 clubs, uh, some of them are, you know, all in, super excited, uh, you know, want to push the envelope, you know, want to, you know, want to figure out how they issue their own crypto token. Uh, and others are kind of fast followers, you know, happy to participate, um, but, you know, want to see how this market develops before they start doing things specifically. Have there any, been any surprises, maybe certain clubs that you didn't expect to really lean in or, or a, certain, um, a, a certain collectible became really popular that you didn't expect? I mean, certain, some, some interesting surprises so far. You know, no, I wouldn't say anything uh, out of the ordinary. Um, I, you know, I, I think maybe the one surprise for somebody who, you know, hasn't spent his career in sports uh, is, you know, when you when you get under the covers and you understand each of these organizations, um, you know, they're they're their own businesses, right? They they have their own marketing teams and development teams and sponsorship teams and things like that, and so. In many ways, even though Major League Baseball and the Players Association are our core clients, you know, we've got 30 more clients, right, who have strong opinions and want to do things. And so, um, you know, that, that's that been a great, uh, it was a great learning lesson for us in terms of how we develop our products and how we create things that work for everybody. And then how we lean into the things that are, you know, very unique to one particular club. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating to to work across the league, but then you go down into the thirty different different businesses. Everyone's got their their own thing happening. 
Absolutely. And, and, you know, and listen, different things that are important to them, right. You know, uh, to their, to their stadium, to their history, to their fans. And so, you know, the, the cool thing about what we're doing um, and really what we're trying to do is we're trying to create, um, you know, not just a product that we replicate across teams or leagues, um, but we're creating these ecosystems. So, you know, we, we're, we're, because we're in these early days, we're creating things like, digital trading cards, we're creating digital tickets, we're creating digital memorabilia. And so we don't believe a one size fits all approach is the right one. Um, we want to test and learn with the league and the clubs to really find out what resonates, you know, with a particular fan base. And, you know, listen, the, the uh, Padres, there may be something that their fans get really excited about, which is going to be very different than the Cubs, right? And, you know, that's part of the journey that we're on. So who are some of the other big partners that you work with at Candy Digital? So um, we're really, you know, fortunate to have great partners, both on the sports side as well as outside of sports. So with, within sports, uh, our additional partners are uh, NASCAR and the, the NASCAR uh, teams, the Race Team Alliance. Um, WWE uh, is a recent partner. In fact, we're in the market with our first WWE product today, which is really exciting. Um, and then uh, last year, obviously, there was a pretty significant sea change in college sports. And so uh, we did the first project after the change in the NIL laws uh, with the first group of college football players and then followed that up in the spring uh, with college basketball players. Um, we've got a few other things in the works uh, on the sports side, but, you know, not quite ready to, to announce those. Um, but, you know, we, we see, you know, opportunities across all of the different, um, all the different sports to, you know, to connect. And then uh, outside of sports, uh, earlier this year, we, we announced our first two partnerships in entertainment and culture. Um, so we're official partner of Netflix uh, with our Stranger Things project. And then uh, we announced our partnership with Getty Images, which will launch later this fall or early next year. We talked about Gary V earlier, you talked about the power of, of what he's all about and how, you know, such a leader in the world of marketing. I mean, this business is, is all about marketing and being able to get it, you know, get your products out into the hands, the virtual hands, I guess, of, of, of consumers. Um, what are some of the ways that you have found that have been, you know, successful for you? I mean, are there certain social media channels? Are there certain other types of campaigns that you, that you run? You mentioned today, you know, you're, you're launching your first um, you know, campaign with WWE. How do you go about that? So I'd, I'd say right now our best marketing channels have really been through our partners. Uh, and so um, Major League Baseball and uh, uh, WWE have both been great partners in terms of leveraging their channels, um, you know, whether that's their email lists or through uh, television advertising. Um, you know, if you watch the World Series last year, uh, you know, candy, the candy banner was there with, you know, kind of advertising our World Series trophy at the All-Star game. We were up on the big board for our commemorative tickets. And so, you know, just can't say enough about how great they've been as a partner in terms of helping to get the word out. Um, WWE had a, a, a Raw uh, uh, last night and, you know, Candy was featured there announcing this. And so, you know, our partners are, are and we call them partners, right? We're, we're not, you know, they're not uh, clients or vendors, they're partners in building this business together. And so, you know, they've been fantastic. Um, next, we kind of go to social media channels, um, you know, so kind of traditional places where people are gathering and connecting with their community. And then, you know, what's maybe more unique to the Web3 space, Discord uh, is the place where a lot of these projects in the community come together. And so, you know, we, I think we've got the best Discord community out there, kind of 35,000 people who are incredibly active, not just as NFT buyers and traders, but as fans of baseball, fans of WWE, fans of Netflix. And so, um, you know, I think one of the most exciting elements of building this business is really to see that community come together, um, not just around our products, but developing actual friendships and relationships because they feel like they're on this journey too. You know, it's interesting you mentioned Discord and, and the community that's been you've been able to build there. And you know, I, I, you know, you hear about you know, just as an example, you know, Nielsen just announced that they're going to start measuring, 
you know, am, you know, on Thursday night football on Amazon from a streaming perspective. So now you're kind of bringing the old guard into the world of, of, of the new way of, of streaming games. You know, you think about the idea is who's measuring, right? You know, who's really looking and measuring these discord communities, the communities that are being built all over the web today that maybe are just not your traditional way of quote unquote watching games Know, sharing information, it, it must be fascinating to just think about that side of the world. It, it is. It's really interesting because it's a real time community, right? You know, when uh, when games are on, uh, people are active in Discord. You know, c commenting on what's happening. We have a particular product with baseball, uh, which we create every day, called Play of the Day. Um, you know, it, it it's determined by Major League Baseball at the end of every game day the most important play, we mint, you know, we develop it overnight, mint it for 12 hours, and then it's gone. And so, you know, one of the fun things that our community does is they're, you know, they're actively discussing, you know, you know, is that home run? Is that diving catch? Is, you know, what, what's going to be the play of the day for the next day, right? Um, but first and foremost, you know, they're fans, right? They're watching games. They're, fo they're following their favorite players and their favorite teams. And, you know, frankly, we are too, right? I mean, we, we, one, the reason we started this business is, we're collectors and we're fans first, right? And, you know, we've just found a new way to express it. That's fascinating. I mean, are there uh, any of the other social channels that you find or have been have been helpful? Yeah, you know, Twitter's great. Facebook's great. Um, you know, uh, I think TikTok at some point, you know, might be interesting, although, you know, I'm, I'm probably aged out beyond the, you know, beyond that demographic. So. <laughs> but um, I, I think this whole world of, technology and adoption is, you know, really about sort of, it's not ignoring the traditional, you know, channels, but it's, it's really figuring out, okay, what's the new way that people consume information and entertainment, which are, what are the ways that people are connecting with their community and how do you add value to that? Right. And I think that's, that's our big thesis around what we're trying to develop, which is, you know, not just how do you take a, you know, the cardboard trading card, which we call 1.0 and evolve it into uh, our digital uh, collectible, which we call icons 3.0. But how does that actually add value to the fan? Like one of the ways that we do it is we've got dynamic statistics, right? So if you own, uh, you know, a Max Scherzer uh, candy icon card, every after every game, right, Max's stats get updated. And so, you know, that collectible now isn't just an image that includes video and a signature and animation and, you know, looks cool, but it actually connects you back to the game in a different way. Right. And so those are the things that we're really excited about is actually using this technology to engage fans and engage those communities in a much more real time way. Well, you know, it's been really interesting having you on our, on our show, Scott. And, and one of the things that we love to do on our show is to really hear a little bit more about the overall team you know, of, of from your company? Like who are some, you know, we talked about Mike and you and you know, what about some of the other executives on your team as well as just the overall team that really makes it all happen for you at, at Candy Digital? Yeah, listen, we, I, I, I feel incredibly fortunate uh, for the team that we've been able to put together. And, you know, it starts with our management team uh, who bring, you know, years of experience from lots of different uh, industries and lots of different perspectives. And, you know, one of the things when you're building a new company is obviously how do you, how do you put a team together that's going to bring the right skill set and the right focus. But one of the, what, you know, our unique challenge is we're building a new company, a space that doesn't really exist. Right. And so that's a great challenge and an opportunity to define what does it mean to be a digital collectibles company? And so, um, you know, my partner and co-founder uh, comes from the crypto space, uh, was uh, running the sports business at Galaxy. And so, you know, that, that was kind of the natural uh, fit to start. But as we sort of built our team out, uh, our head of operations comes from uh, Jet.com and Walmart. So brings a real e-commerce uh, focused experience and perspective on you know, how you engage customers and build customer service and you know, how you think about that whole process of selling and support. Uh, our chief creative officer, Shane Small, uh, comes from a, a design and a, and a gaming background. 
He happens to be the inventor of exploding kittens, which is, you know, sort of one of the great successes from a you know card game perspective, but had done a ton of work with Facebook and Instagram on, on future casting and thinking about how technology was going to continue to engage people going forward. Our chief experience officer, Matt Labowitz, comes from the MIT Media Lab. He's been a video game designer and has uh, was one of the early folks in, in designing Pokemon Go. So, you know, connecting the dots between the, a digital asset that exists in the physical world and, and sort of gamifying that. Um, our general counsel, Jen Hartzler, comes from a startup environment uh, and, and so brings with her the experience of, you know, how do you think about all the legal issues and, you know, whether that's the the boring stuff like insurance and contract law and all the things that you actually need to make your, your company run. Um, and so, you know, from, and from that team on below, you know, we've been really lucky to, to find people who bring a tremendous amount of excitement, passion, and curiosity to this space. So, you know, my objective in getting started here was to build a great culture. And, you know, when you're, when you're building a business in a space that's focused on sports and entertainment, and you add technology into that mix, um, you know, you get a lot of people who are interested that, you know, the challenge is really finding those people that share that vision and that excitement that we all have. Well, it sounds like you've been able to do that. And, and, and have you been able to do this? Is your team, you know, spread out across the world or is it all in New York where you are? You know? Yeah, so it's it, it's a little bit of both. So as I said, we sort of, we, we kind of got started in the, depths of the pandemic in October of 2020. Um, we took office space in May of last year. So kind of right right after, uh, you know, vaccines started rolling out, you know, uh, my co-founder and I said, okay, if we're going to build this business, uh, let's get in a room together, right? And let's start to get our, get our team together. And so while we, while we felt the, the need and the desire to build a company and a culture in real life, uh, you know, or certainly in proximity, we also said the, it's a different place. The world's a different place. And so let's not limit ourselves to only people who are in around New York. Let's go find the best team available. And so as we kind of fast forward to where we are now, kind of 100 people in the business, about half of our team is in and around New York City and half of our team is remote. So our creative director and our uh, creative team is, is largely out in LA. Um, we've got some folks who sit in Chicago. We've got some folks up in the Pacific Northwest and we've got some folks in Boston. Um, and so it's really been more about finding the talent where it's at and developing a culture where you know, we're connected in ways that people don't feel left out or cut out of the conversation. So Scott, as we start to wrap up here, you know, I, I, I have to ask, you know, when you look out into the next, you know, five, 10 years or so, where, where do you think this, this business, this industry is all going to go? What, what, are, what are things going to look like for Canada Digital? So I think five, 10 years out, digital assets are just going to be pervasive. Um, you know, we probably won't call them NFTs. We won't necessarily call them digital collectibles. Like they're like just the same way you, you, today you don't say, hey, I'm going to go use the internet to, to, to look something up, right? You just go and do it. I think, you know, digital wallets, everyone's going to have a digital wallet. Digital assets are going to be part of our lives as it relates to payments, as it relates to collectibles, as it relates to tickets, as it relates to receipts. And you know, for 95% of those, they're gonna be free and they're just gonna be records of the things that you do that connect you to the things you love, to your community, to your friends, et cetera. So, you know, you, you know can we start it out and you, and you mentioned sort of those three letters, NFT. Um, you know, I, I wanna put a bounty out there. Somebody needs to come up with a better name than, than, than NFTs, right? And, and that's part of this journey that we're on, which is demystifying the technology, making it easy and helping people understand that um, you know, this isn't just about, you know, sort of buying and selling and digital lottery tickets. It's really about a new way to connect with, you know, communities and the things you love. Well, we certainly want to stay and keep in touch with you and, and stay in touch and see if there are ways that we can help each other, you know, build this world that we, we both really believe in will be even even better, you know, and with, with all these, with, with all the new tech and all the new things that are coming down the pike, it, it's just, it's really incredible. So again, Scott, thank you so much for joining us on our 76 Capital Leadership Show. Much appreciated. Wish you and your whole team at Canada Digital much success. 
Thanks, Wayne. Really appreciate the time. Thanks a lot.